Southeastern Carolina, Daddy did. Yeah. And we had uh, uh, raised queens down there. About three weeks or a month ahead of Grant, that's yeah. on the coast, down there close to the coast, and raised queen bees there. Mama would say with Man Alex, we was in school. I thought, I think I was about lazy. Huh. And yeah. went down there, because I was playing in the ditches and catch the fish and stuff. But we had to work during the day with the stuff that there. So anyhow, we could get early queens to ship to California, Florida. And they bought the queens in the early place where it was too cold in North Carolina. So, when, so you was already selling queens commercially then? We ship yeah. in North Carolina. Queens, ship them, yeah. Ship them, ship them all around. In fact, Granddaddy Curtis, which was the daddy of what used to raise queens, he come down and him and Grandma and raised glad oyas in the land that we had leased there. And he had he, bees. He would ship them back to the florist and Graham and Bird. Yeah, but did he do queens too? Who? Papa Curtis. Yeah, he did. He run. Did the, his dad do quick bees? He had the, what they call the golden. And with a yellow queen to death, the gentleman didn't work good. Did he? Did his yeah, dad have seen, bees? Huh? So you don't have to look. Did look his ways. dad have bees? Papa's dad have bees, or you don't know? I don't know about him. I know Granddaddy did. Cut that off. Granddaddy did, and then uh, so anyhow, he come down and raised the glad oats. You know, we ended up coming down here and helping mm -hmm. cut out the corn and stuff. But anyhow, when Mr. Reeves called, Daddy, I was in high school. Okay. Last year in high school. And uh, he said, man wanted to come to Shea. He said, let's go look in today. So him and Mama come down here and rented that old army barrack down here on old Fraser Street, the one that burnt down in mm -hmm. later. Wow. All right. I come down Christmas to visit and helped him some, went back. And then when he got ready to double up the boxes, I've called a bus and Graham, Graham my brother, come out of my way and come and got to Fort Myers. Well, I had a four hour layover. And I said, Well, I ain't staying here no four hours. I got on, I don't need it, thumb. <laughs> and caught a ride and come in and got off. I don't know how I could remember then and yeah. got off and come on that street down right where, about where the uh, Kale lived on. Right yeah, in there. Hardy. That's Hardy Street. And come and, uh, Kept him double up when we went home. Well, Daddy got in and said, Boys, I believe we got a chance to break, break work these the year round. Because he had to go work the home from him. Oh, yeah. or, and then when we were young, and then we carpentered and painted and did everything. And uh, I stayed there by myself that year. Fed the cow. We had cows and had pigs and had, I had 500 layer chickens and stuff like that. I, nobody we couldn't leave. Mm -hmm. and I worked at the third shift and uh, over in Swiftsville in a cotton mill. And on the third shift, I could get another nickel an hour. So I worked the third shift, made a dollar and five cent an hour. And uh, we, uh, Van and Daddy come back and he said, so we said I got, they come back up there. Right? And uh, we come down here, I got married. We got married, me and Nancy, now that Nancy's already married. We come down and all of us, Left, but he told Mr. Reed after a year. After a year, he told me, uh, the second year, he said, Mr. Reed, that's what we like is but we can't make a living for all three of us. No more bees you got. He said, well, bring your bees in. So we, that's when uh, we loaded up. I know 500 hives come in here that night. It was back the second or third year we worked with Mr. Reed, that's on our old cookbook. And uh, come in here with brought 500 hives in. Mr. Reed owned the old cook place, or he just was in part, he just he worked with them? Uh -huh. He worked with the cooks? Cooks, no. Mr. Reed, did no, he work? No, no. He had his own, as far as I know now. Uh, Jim Cook was already in Ethel. She, he married Paul Reynolds' daughter, uh, sister. That's how right, they I got into that. So Mr. Reams. Reams, he lived down about, he, maybe he rented that place over there. Mr. Reams might have, that's where we worked that moment. It was over at the 
cook place. And uh, Jim and Daddy, made, they had beans, and then they made syrup too. They made that syrup. I wish we would have got that recipe. He was supposed to give it to me before he died. But anyhow, we all come down in and started uh, working bees and making hives and picking up all the boxes and things that we could buy inside the road and made her make making boxes out of it. And, uh, so how did you get to Sanibel? Huh? How did you get to Sanibel? We go to Sanibel and had to cross on a ferry. Or the Panarossa, where you go out and drive up on a ramp there and go on the ferry. And how we got to going on there, a fella come by down there where we lived on Fraser Street and wanted us to shake packages of beef for him, so we did. And but you don't know his name. I can't remember his name. But that, but that wasn't Mr. Reams. It wasn't Mr. Reams. No, we was done probably on our own about then. So anyhow, we went, went over there and did that, and the next year we did it. Well, he come on up here and Daddy said, we can't do that no more. So we got all we can handle. And I, he said, if you'll shake me a package of beans out of each one of them, I'll sell them to you for a dollar a half. And Daddy says, all right. So we did, did that. And uh, Mr. Bailey owned a lot of those locations and the land, you know, he still sell honey to him. And uh, we cross on that ferry and then come back on the ferry and they never bother nobody. And uh, they had them for high water, they had concrete blocks. You step on a big old four by eight or something there, uh, eight by uh, six. Or, then your bees set up here that high, all waist high. So the high water, when the ocean rises, that it wouldn't drown the bees. But then we did not know trouble with it much and we had bees over there and come a big rain and we lost a bunch of bees. We got one up over the high body with 60 hives in one yard. And uh, we saved them all for uh, all one hive. But anyhow we get make that honey. That's how we got to go on over the sand bay with that man there and got him and don't remember his name. So we just kept making buying more bees, people around here Small ones tried to go into it, and they couldn't make it that far. I bought Eddie, Eddie Reynolds and his daddy and his brother out. Uh, 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 buddy, I see his brand on his Triple R. You know, one high body out there the other day. Oh, really? Yep. I never remember seeing that. I, I bought them and run all the high bodies. And if the high was weak, I switched the brood and stuff. Jesse Old Pearl, I don't know what he did. He said, you have the first of the bee yard live out here on Fort De Nope. And I'm in there where Murray, Oliver Murray's place was on the yard in there. Plus, we still had our bees to get them. And that's how we got here. We just kept expanding and expanding. And, and uh, we, as soon as that, we give up the place in Eastern Carolina where Danny did all the house at that time. Granddaddy worked, and Jimmy worked, and Daddy's brother come, Mama, sister, and Lonnie come out. And Lonnie and her husband come and work with us. And uh, we'd make that crop honey down there what, on the gum. And it's the same thing as made up this Apicotia River. What is it called? Triple O. Triple O honey, the same stuff. And we would make that bottle and uh, then move to North Carolina and make the popper. And then we move from the popper to go to the uh, mountain, the Blue Ridge Mountain, to make sour with honey. So you went from the coast to the from the coast to the Piedmont set. You went from the coast, then you went back to the house, and then you went to the mountains. Then moved to the mountains about fourth of July. And Did we you ever went, make any sour? We went right on the coast now. We were there around in half of June east. and Atkinson. We ship East packages of bees. We ship packages of bees about a hundred. To where? All over, all over the United States. When did you send them overseas? Uh, when did you send them overseas? Overseas, after we were here. And some fella, we already sent some, a lot of queens, Mexico, South America, all of them places. Well, we got an order from London, England, to 
seven hundred three pound packages of bees and clean. And uh, we uh, so we fixed a hundred. I got the pistol right in there where we took them to the airport in mine. Next week we shook another hundred. And we got bees, we done had them bees on sound. I go over and be a car green and shook a hundred packages by ourselves. We two have drummed them, you know. Didn't have to find the queen. We used to hunt the queen, stand the queen out, shake it, and you, she'd be done crawl and put it back in, and so that way she couldn't get through the queen. But uh, then we sent a pack, up, up 600 packages in six weeks, and we run out of bees to have enough bees. Well, I left my mama in North Carolina. We still had bees up there then. And I shook a hundred, me and the bee inspector, he had to inspect the brood while I shook I shook a hundred three pound packages and mailed them uh, from uh, Greensboro Airport. And they went to London and never lost a bee. But then we got a order from Iran, wanted five pound packages of bees. We got a hundred of them and sent them over and they busted them open. We never got our money, never got paid for the bees enough. They had busted them in the airplane. And we never did. We got them. So we quit something. We didn't do that no more. 